So before we can troubleshoot the sideband, we have to figure out how this radio creates sidebands. So um, I have the block diagram here. And uh, in yellow here, I've highlighted the um, transmit path. So starting at the antenna, I worked backwards. And uh, it goes through a low pass filter and then a bunch of pre drivers. Well, so low pass filter, this is the final amplifier, a whole bunch of drivers, buffers, and then it ends up uh, going into a uh, mixer where it uh, gets finally converted to the correct frequency. And then it comes down into an IF section. Um, and then it comes around down here and there's like three IFs, uh, but right here I have in yellow here is a IC, IC2. It is a UPC 1037 and it is a single chip that does single sideband generation. <laughs> How handy is that? And then that's fed by two things. It's fed by the microphone, which goes through an amplifier. So the microphone goes in here, so you have audio entering it, and then you have a local oscillator entering it. So you're mixing audio and some local oscillator and creating sideband. All right, so let's see how that works. Um, let's see, before we get to the schematic, let's take a look at the uh, chip. Um, yeah, so the only data sheet I could find on this chip is all in Japanese. Two different companies, two different data sheets, but all in Japanese. But that's okay. Um, that does give a schematic of how it works. And it's a 7-pin uh, SIP package, which is interesting. And you basically give it the carrier and give it the audio and then it outputs single sideband. Actually, it outputs dual sideband. We'll talk about that. Bypass is just a capacitor. You just add a capacitor to filter an internal node. Um, and then power and ground. So the only two inputs are the carrier and the signal, or the uh, RF and the AF. And then the output can be two different versions of the output. You can either bring the output directly or you can bring it through an emitter follower. Um, so, in this particular radio, they just use the emitter follower, a um, little bit more drive capability. So, um, as I mentioned, it's dual sideband. So, well, what it does is it takes the carrier and it mixes it with the input signal and you get the uh, uh, carrier plus audio and the carrier minus audio, so you get the two sidebands. And then it does carrier suppression, so it removes the carrier. And so you, you start out with, uh, with maybe an AM signal, but then you remove, you remove the carrier and you end up with the two sidebands, okay? And that's what this chip does. Um, then you say, well, you got two sidebands. What if you want lower sideband or upper sideband? Well, then you uh, shift it in frequency and you run it through a narrow filter. And that narrow filter throws away the other sideband. You either throw away the lower sideband if you don't want it, or you throw away the upper sideband if you don't want it. Uh, but the carrier's already taken out. All right, so that's the way that works. All right, so um, it talks about it in the theory of operation, in the uh, manual, talks about the IF circuits. Um, and what you're doing here is that uh, in uh, transmit mode, IC2 is a carrier null, and you get rid of the carrier, like I said. Um, so it's a balanced thing. So when you balance it, the null, the, the center carrier goes out. If it's unbalanced, then it doesn't work very well. So the trick is getting this thing balanced, all right? All right, so let's take a look at where it is in the schematic here. And this is probably way too small. Um, but uh, what we have here is we have, uh, let me get something better to point with. Um, we have a local oscillator. This is a crystal oscillator. 
and uh, it has a couple inductors attached to it with some switching. So you can, you can pull this crystal back and forth a little bit. And then here's all the frequencies. So when you're in lower sideband, it generates 9.01 megahertz. Upper sideband, 9.013. AM, 9.0115. And CW, 9.0108. Okay. Um, so, I think the first thing we should do is make sure these are all working. They are the carriers, and those carriers go into this, the IC here. This is that single sideband IC, or the double sideband IC. Um, and so let's make sure the uh, frequencies are right, or if the frequencies are... We saw what kind of looked like FM. I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but maybe one of these carriers is oscillating or something. So, yeah, let's... Uh, I think we'll do that first. So here's the radio uh, with the top off. And uh, this board right here is the detector board. And uh, it has the, uh, the IC on it. So this is that uh, double sideband IC right here. Here's the crystal and here's the inductors that pull that crystal. So that local oscillator is here. And um, so let's go probe around in there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be using a, uh, a non-contact probe, and uh, we'll just kind of we'll just kind of come over here somewhere. Just kind of lay it down over that circuit. See if I can get it to stay. Do I have something heavy I can lay on top of that? There we go. All right. So uh, we expect this to be around uh, nine megahertz. All right. So let's get our Spectrum analyzer set up. We'll do frequency of nine megahertz, and uh, we'll do a span of uh, uh, let's say a hundred kilohertz. All right, and um, let me turn the radio on. Oh, and there we go. We have a uh, we have a signal. See that? There we go. So we have some kind of signal. That's good. Um, now, when you first turn your spectrum analyzer on it, its first mission in life is to save itself. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't like to have its front end blown out. So it will always set the input attenuator to something where it feels sa safe, okay? You can override that, and in, in this case, we're gonna override it, okay? Um, and that's because we know we're using a non-contact probe and we can't introduce any problems into the machine. Um, so we're gonna go into amplitude, and here's an attenuator. We're gonna set it to manual, and we're gonna say zero dB. So we're gonna get rid of the attenuator. And there we go, we have this nice big signal now. All right, and um, we can turn the preamp on too. Now we have a nice big, big signal to take a look at, okay? And we can take a look at the peak and we can read the frequency off. So it's 9.0101, all right? And if we take a look at our list, uh, let's see, where did I write that down? Uh, where did I write that down? So, we are in lower sideband. Lower sideband should be 9.01. So we have 9.0101. So that's, that's close enough for me. Let's do upper sideband. And it's moved. So we'll do a peek on that one. And that one should be 9.013. And it's 9.02933. Close. And then um, AM. AM, there's nothing. And then on CW, uh, we should be 9.0108. And we are 9.0108 exactly. So everything looks really good there. Not sure about the AM. Maybe the AM is being carrier suppressed already in this circuit or something else is going on. But. AM is working fine, so I'm not going to worry about that. AM is working fine. All right, so we've val we've validated and verified uh, <laughs> that our 
frequency, our local oscillator frequency is working good, okay? All right, so we can uh, then figure out how this is used in this circuit. So like I said, there's a um, carrier suppression, but it also has to operate in AM mode. And the way that it does that is this, with this one transistor here. If this transistor is on, it saturate. well, it doesn't saturate, it, yeah, I guess it saturates this thing. Um, there, it's kind of hard to explain, but the input, if you think of this as an op amp, okay, then there's two inputs, and so you have um, a, a voltage offset problem with your op amp, and a lot of op amps you have adjustments to get rid of that, that input offset voltage. And uh, they've done that with this particular device. Uh, there's a, a resistor here, a potentiometer, and a potentiometer here, and those go into the two different inputs, and you use those as a balance. And so you set those two to balance the input offset, otherwise this thing won't get rid of the carrier correctly. You need to balance it so that when it sees the two inputs, they're exactly the same, and that's what, that's what does the uh, carrier removal. So, um, if that's not working, maybe this, maybe this transistor's bad, so we should make sure that transistor is working. Um, but let's see if we are doing the carrier removal correctly, okay? So in order to see that, we're gonna go back to what we had a couple days ago, okay? We will take the output of the uh, uh, transmitter with, with a, with a uh, attenuator, and we will enter that in here. Now I'm gonna preset the machine. So why did I just preset the machine? Because I had set the preamp on and I had set the manual attenuation to zero. I'm gonna put it back into uh, default mode where it knows how to protect itself. <laughs> um, so I'm going to then connect this back up. We're not gonna get into trouble because we have this nice big attenuator right here, but it's always a good idea. If you've ever set the manual attenuator or done something different, just hit the preset button, put it back into its uh, happy place. All right, so. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so we are going to be transmitting on 28, 0.1 megahertz. All right, and we'll do a span of 100 kilohertz. So 28.1, 100 kilohertz. Everything's looking good. We're on, uh, let's put it on AM. And there we go, I'm transmitting. Okay, so let's do a amplitude reference level. Let's do 40 dB. Uh, we have a 30 dB pad in there. There we go. And... Yeah, there we go. Hello, test, test, test. That's our AM, everything's working good. Okay, so now let's go to lower sideband. Um, and remember lower sideband, I was gonna put a tone through it. Let me get my phone out. I'm running an app called uh, Tone Gen. That is generates a two kilohertz tone, so we can. Sometimes I whistle, but I'm not accurate at whistling. So, there we go. And there we go. So we're getting a. Uh, let's do a span of 50 kilohertz. And so we're getting a. Uh, let me turn up the gain here a little bit. We're getting this nice, uh, I'm talking into it as well. But you see we're getting a thing to the left. Okay, and let's go to upper sideband. And upper sideband, let's see here. I need to adjust my frequency again. There we go. Upper sideband's working perfect. All right, so, so <laughs> I have to lie. Um, the, the, uh, I spent a couple hours on it last night and I figured out what was wrong with the thing. 
So, but I do have it now working. So we can see a nice, uh, a nice demonstration here. Okay. So here we have, let's do AM. Okay. So here's AM. So we have a carrier and we have two side bands. Everything looks good. Let's, uh, let's do a span of 20 kilohertz. Look at that. Oh, beauty. Okay. So our side bands are about one division, right? Looks good. Let's do a, uh, we'll get it all nice. The center frequency. There we go. So we'll have our side bands exactly on the, uh, two things. We'll go to lower side band. And now you can see we have, oh, now we have just the lower side band left over. And then we'll go to upper side band. And we have just the upper side band left over. All right. So how do they fix it? Um, let me show you. All right. So I told you about the two resistors here that set the uh, input offset voltage for this part. And in the manual and service manual, um, it talks about uh, adjusting these two. And um, it gives you a procedure to adjust those two. And I just use the pictures that I just showed you now. And uh, uh, I just wanted to see if there was any effect or not, because it didn't seem right to me. It seemed like lower sideband was working, so these were probably set okay. It was removing the carrier for lower sideband. It was just real goofy at upper, upper sideband. Um, but uh, I put a screwdriver to these two uh, potentiometers here, and yeah, it just was wild. These are super, super touchy. You just move them a tiny, tiny bit, and that chip goes nuts on you. So it took, took about uh, 15 minutes of tweaking uh, to get the happy balance because they interact with one another, okay? And so turning one, I could like reduce the carrier and then turning the other one, it would, it would modify it. And so tweaking it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, I finally got it so it was nice and balanced. And once it was nice and balanced, then the radio works the way it was intended to work. So there you go, nothing broken. It was just maladjusted. Um, and it might have shifted because I changed capacitors or whatever. I, I'm not quite sure. I never did transmit uh, before I put new capacitors in it. So it might have been, might have been uh, maladjusted before I got the radio, but I, I don't know. Anyway, it's an old radio. You have to expect these things. So now everything looks, now everything looks fine.